sometimes um, whenever we go out right here in the middle of the day, you want them, you're at the mall. Then you notice that um, you look in my heart today, and you're like, can I book you later? <laughs> Caitlin. Hi, I'm Julian. I'm Kimberly. Hi, I'm Leah, and this is Zula Chick Chats. Hi, guys, welcome to today's episode of Zula Chick Chats. And today we'll be talking about relationships and how they change after marriage. So, I think it's a very common thing that people ask, you know, like in long term relationships, how does the relationship evolve? And today we have a panel of people who are all married and um, would share their experiences on how their relationship has changed over time as well. To start off, maybe you guys can um, tell us a bit about how long you've been in, in a relationship, how long you've been married for. Dating around slightly less than a year, then marriage four years already. Me and my wife, we've been together since 2013 and then we got married in 2018. So all in all about a decade. We did about two years, married seven years, so in total about nine years. So the the question first to start right before we jump into like the whole marriage part of it. So how was the relationship at the start? We met in a church setting. It's like literally like I'm sitting here, right? it's where Leah sits, it's where my husband sits. So we're just like, eh? First, love at first sight, Mark, and two months later we're together. And we exchange number outside a toilet. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, 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 outside a church. Holy toilet. <laughs> I was the one who asked him for number. La. I was like, hey, quite cute, ma. Don't want to lose the chance. Then, look at us then. The rest is history. Yeah. Relationship at the start, amazingly real. We quarrel like within a month, and we meet every single day mm. without fail. Even until today, the, for the past nine years, like, we're still seeing each other every single day. Like super clingy, super sticky. Me and my wife were studying from the same school in college. And I didn't really pursue her immediately because she was dating someone else. I was also dating someone else. My group was kind of like so-called like the more like gangster abing type in the Philippines. And her group was like the studious, like very, very <laughs> good girls. Then suddenly, after college, right, our, our groups became like very friendly with each other. Then slowly we became like more interested towards each other after that. Yeah. Okay. So at the start of the relationship, how was it like? Was it very like super romantic, super butterflies, like all those very typical Yeah, man. Because I kind of like slowly acknowledged that I was getting interested to her. I needed like two bottles of beer just to tell her that, hey, I actually like you to mm. like build up some courage. Okay. <laughs> so my story not so clean cut and wholesome. I met my husband on Tinder, but when I saw him on Tinder, I knew who he was already. Not because he's, I was, I've been stalking him or whatever, but because his ex girlfriend's very pretty. I like to follow pretty girls on Instagram. And I'm just like, wait, hey, this is the pretty girl's boyfriend. And I'm like, oh, he's either cheating on her or they just broke up. But anyway, let's try to find out. I mean, it was like after the first meeting, it was game over already. I saw his. He looked at me, I looked at him, and like took the same thing. Ooh. And then um, from there, it was like very fast and furious. Mm. So the dating part of our relationship, sorry, was very tumultuous. Like we were very in love, you know. Then also fight a lot uh, to the point where we almost broke up once. But then at the point where we almost broke up, we were like, okay, what do we want? Yeah. If we're mm -hmm. going to continue being together, then we either stay together to get married or like just don't be together anymore because what's the point of wasting each other's time? We decided that we will stay together. Yeah, actually married life is 200% nicer than how it was yes. when we yeah. were dating because there's no more of that like, oh, who's this girl? Uh? Who are you going? It's just like, I trust him <laughs> completely. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. That, that's the mindset that I had coming into after we got married. So Kim, you mentioned like marriage is like great, right? Mm -hmm. For you. So maybe for you guys, maybe you can, can like list down like the the great things about it in a certain way and how like that was like completely different before like y'all got married or so. Like. Being married, right, is having a dependable partner, definitely. You are not gonna face your problems alone anymore because they will always be there to help you. It's kind of like, the dating you also have those <laughs> yeah. pros, but then yeah. you're not too sure if this person's going to be there. Oh. How yeah. much do you reveal to this person if he or she just ups and leaves the next day? Do you tell them about your family struggles? Mm -hmm. But now it's like, you know. Uh, whatever you go to, uh, the, the, your partner is your therapist basically. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. commitment yeah. on caps lock. Commitment on caps lock! Yes. And also, uh, maybe some, some people have concerns, like after you get married, how does it evolve after that? For me, if you ask me if there's changes, yes, a lot, especially when we live together. Mm. Because one big word came into our life, commitment. The whole house equals to two of us. Mm. It's like, it's not 
him anymore, it's not me anymore, it's just us together as one. I think that people, when they are dating, right, and they get mm. married, they, it's very important to cut, to enter a, a marriage or a lifetime together with the right mindset. Mm. Usually people get married when the relationship is at their highest point, and then they expect things to only go up from there, but when you're seeing someone and like, every single day, you know, and like, going through real mm. shit, like bills, yeah. uh, maybe going through losses together, mm. you know. Like, when you get married, you really see your partner for who they really are at the core, all their like, their, their bad habits, like their quirks, for yeah. example, in my house, right, the things I used to argue with my husband a lot about in the start, when we just started living together was small things, like we have a coin jar, he'll put the coins everywhere around the house except in the coin jar, next to the coin jar, you know, like, under the, like, all over the place, lah, but never in the coin jar, so, this, these are the kind of things that, the small things that used to uh, rile me up a lot. He said something to me once, that he said that if you create bad vibes in the bad, house, bad aura. he doesn't wanna, yeah. he won't wanna come home. Mm -hmm. Then I thought about it for a while, yes, if I had a long day at work, right, would I wanna come home and have someone mm -hmm. nag at me and scold me about these kind of things? So now it's like we have this mantra, don't sweat the small stuff. If mm -hmm. it's small, let's not get into an argument over it, let's just work around it. Which I think has really helped our marriage. So, um, do you guys have any concerns, like, in the long run. Do you have any concerns? Like, Do you think that you will take each other for granted? No. Because okay. like, um, that is one of the things that entering marriage should be something that you think of. Like you cannot enter marriage with the mindset that um, oh this person is gonna do everything for me or gonna support me fully. I was going to answer yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I'm buying lunch or so, I then have a tendency to just buy for myself. But mm -hmm. if I know I'm going to see him, then okay, I'll, I have to, okay, remember, I have to buy for my husband also. I just want him to be fed also. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have that tendency of taking mm -hmm. him for granted. But yeah. I have to constantly like, check myself. La. I think it's normal to yeah. like have to check check yes, yourself yes. also, mm -hmm. right? Because now you're not taking for just as a thing for like another person. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we're dating, right, the like, say boyfriend or girlfriend, you like mm -hmm. to do small little sweet gestures yeah, yeah. for your partner. For example, like, let's say you like Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Then uh, your boyfriend will keep buying you Starbucks mm -hmm. only and then drink because you know you like it. Correct. Then when you get married, suddenly he doesn't buy you Starbucks. But that shouldn't be the case. So when you're married, you should also continue to yeah. show yeah. love and affection Correct. all the time. Like. In that light, right, to make things exciting, right, I sometimes mix uh, my coffee differently. Like sometimes it's caramel macchiato, sometimes it's oh, so uh, vanilla flavor. Then she'll be like, hey, this is different. Like, what do you make? Mm. Oh, you make for her? Yeah. No, oh. I mean, like, we both are very into coffee. Oh. Right, right, right. So we alternate. Like, sometimes I, I make the coffee, sometimes she makes the coffee for me when I'm busy working. Yeah. Your partner will feel so much more appreciated if you go up your way to show mm. that you're thinking about them. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I think I totally agree with what Kim says. Yeah, my husband and me, our love language is to eat. We have a commitment that every day we must sit down together and have dinner together. I'll make sure I prepare everything. All he needs to do is just sit down eat. Yeah, I, I think that's the minimum as a wife that I just want to love him. Then for example, like some other concerns mm. maybe like, you know like as time goes by, people change, right? Mm. Yeah, I think it's natural for people to discover new interests, new things they enjoy, yes. um, to find new hobbies for example, and people will grow eventually. Like, what are your thoughts on that? So I think, especially when you get married, right, it, it comes to a point that you guys are doing the same thing so much that sometimes you want to see your partner dabble on something new. And it excites you to see what progress they're making. It. Like for me, I encourage um, letting your partner grow and build up different interests that doesn't interest you. Because also you need to make sure that you give enough space for your partner. Because if you do everything the same like together, right, Holy shit, man. It's like really the shackles, man. Mm. I, I always believe in space, even though as mm. a husband and wife. Um, even half an hour space also good. Like, um, my husband enjoys running. Uh, I don't like running. But he will have his own me time, like half an hour to 45 minutes to himself every alternate days. What, yeah. what is Evan's interest that doesn't yeah. interest me? Oh, he's very into fish. Like He went to fish shop. So oh. he he's like into the breeding. He's into like the different color combinations. When we started dating, I'm just like, Oh, these are fish. But then I made an effort to like find out about the fish, like what are the different types. So, so for me also, I have many different interests, none of which interest him. I like to sew. I sometimes like to, I like to do a lot of like fleeting hobbies, you know, like pottery, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, arts and craft. He, like what Julian says, always encourages my endeavours. Uh, but I think you, I don't know whether people really change though. Mm. Like I think interest, interest change, can yeah. fluctuate, yeah, mm. change. I think, we definitely are going to be different people. 
mm. like in time especially in marriage you always go through things together mm. like you you grow together in life you reach uh, the same milestones together so probably it's not that people will change but how you will adjust with your foundation how you hold true to true to your foundation of knowing that person and how you will handle things i think if you have open communication in your marriage right yeah. you will you'll be going along with the changes right. and nothing will be a shock to you yeah. but right. if you something is a shock to you then i think something went wrong somewhere yeah. we'll go to like a, a few comments for for this okay. someone said that how do you manage to keep the relationship alive after marriage this is more like keeping it spicy oh. my husband really? hates anything planned like the romantic spicy stuff cannot right. be planned yes, right. yes. I know a lot of couples in marriage they say you must plan these kind of things but he hates it mm. so if I like say like okay tomorrow let's set aside time to like you know have a nice like mm. candlelit dinner blah 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 massage he'll be like <laughs> right, but he doesn't right. like that stuff can I just share my side <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes um, whenever we go out right you're in the middle of the day you want them, you're at the mall then you notice that um, hey <laughs> <laughs> You look in my heart today. <laughs> Maybe she tried on a dress. Then you're like, can I book you later? <laughs> For us, like it kind of works. Like okay. yeah, it's very cute. Something to look forward to, like later in the night. Yeah. It will be so much yeah. easier if my husband let me book him also. And then also, like, you must respect your partner. Like if your partner's tired, right? You don't yeah, just yeah, go yeah. and don't force them and be like, yeah. you always like, yes, yes. Uh, keep sex from me. Also, know that it is. The need for it decreases when you are together mm. and see each other for so long. Mm. Doesn't mean that you will feel less attracted to the person or yeah. the sex will be any less good it's just that you don't need to jump their bones all the time anymore yeah, yeah. but once the spark hits god damn yeah. oh, no. oh, I forgot we were 30 <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a question I have lah. did you guys ever um, find any, out anything different after you all got married about your partner I noticed mm. and realised mm. that she totally hates my movie preferences <laughs> Every time we, we pick movies and I'm a movie filmmaker but then I'm like super invested in it like Jupiter's Legacy, it's a new <laughs> series, it's about uh, how superheroes, you know, like they they manage the daily life as humans. Then she's like Huh? <laughs> we just like watch like something else, like maybe like uh what's that that show where they compete who's the best chef? Uh Final one? Table. Yes. Okay. That's okay. a great show by the way. Like for <laughs> me, like I couldn't understand like you would pick the final thing. I could watch like, with your wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's one one of the like cool things that I discovered. That means she was only pretending to, you know, like. No, oh my god, imagine it. So she never said anything about it when you guys were dating. No, or I mean, like, like together. When we were dating, I was usually the one picking movies. And she was okay lah. Yeah, but now. Since yeah, after marriage, she's like, <laughs> actually ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so with that said, we kind of like concluded this video. I mean, like um you guys share your own experiences when it comes to like how your relationship kind of evolved after marriage and also like the pros and like you know the different things like, like everything and maybe any like uh words of advice for people um at the end who are who are married who like you know have any concerns in their relationship uh just keep things interesting like mm -hmm. keep doing the surprises you used to do when you were yeah. dating Every keep the dating. surprises yeah. coming also mm -hmm. in the bedroom yeah. you know like maybe surprise maybe you bought like a borat uh, <laughs> Oh, and also like always uh, keep the communication lines open because mm. if not, you're gonna end up uh, closing off your thoughts or like keeping it in and then when it all just like boils over, that could be like a point of no return if that happens. I think just don't sweat the small stuff. If it's mm. something that you can easily fix just by doing something, it takes a little bit more effort, do it. Don't go into an argument just over something that is really so small, you know, you'll end up regretting it and it might break your marriage down. Mm. In the long run, go easy on your partner. Don't be judgmental. You know, always lend a listening ear, no matter what time of day. You never know like what your partner is going through. Uh, when you speak, whatever it is you're trying to convey, always be respectful and polite, lah. Because you know, tone is everything when yeah. you're in a marriage. Don't mention divorce if you're in an argument. Never, never, no, never. Because no. divorce is a taboo word in marriage. Anything unhappy, talk. This. Talk is everything. No, but of course, if you're in like an abusive marriage, yeah, you know, then of course, yes, yes, yes. please go counseling. Mm. Toxic, toxic yeah. relationship, get out of it. Don't stay. Oh, but I guess it's interesting that you mentioned like don't say that word. Mm. Like you know, don't yeah. say divorce when you are married. Because I think that's, that's something that I mean, 
Like, I didn't think about that as, like, a consideration, right? Mm. But, like, you know, when, when you guys mentioned it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, that's quite an important thing to think about as well. Oh, wait, I have one big advice. Get to know your partner more even uh, before getting into marriage. Because mm. for me, right, I didn't have a choice, but it actually happened for us. Like, before we got married, we moved in together for three years. So, we knew more about each other before we headed that way. Right. Yeah. I agree yeah. with what Julian said also. Get to know your partner inside out. Yeah. Their can you, quirks, can their you, smelliness. Can you, can, you, you know, can you take it in? Can you yeah. adjust towards that? Can you back out of that? I always get this question. Mm. How do you know if the person is the right one for you? When should you settle down? Mm. Like, who, you know, is it the right person to yeah. settle down? There's no right person. Yep. You can make the person the right person right. if you choose to accept yes. him or her for his yes. or her flaws. In the marriage, you'll see all the worst sides come yeah. out and mm. and it's whether you can accept that. Okay, so with that said, we've come to the end of the video. Yay! Thank you guys for uh, watching and also if you have anything to share about uh, marriage in the comments, feel free to share. And let us know what other videos you want to see next time on Zuda Chick Chat and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!